Mr. Wallenberg, thank you very much for your time today. First of all, let's just talk about what you see happening in Europe in terms of the economy. How would you assess the performance of the European economy since the economic crisis? I would hope for saying that this, uh, if I may call it fragile recovery, is going to continue. Northern Europe is relatively stable, the United Kingdom has improved. Uh, and Southern Europe, a number of these countries have already done restructurings, which I think will serve them a lot of good when things get a little bit better. So hopefully Southern Europe is now bouncing, if I may say so, on the bottom, uh, halting the, the fall and, and hopefully getting back uh, over time. But I think it's going to take time. Uh, consumer confidence in Southern Europe is, uh, I think, severely battered over the past five years. Uh, so it will take some time. Uh, now we will have uh, a lot of focus on the financial sector again because uh, there will be stress tests made on the bank, there will be a change of supervisory function for the ECB, you will have an asset test of the banks. So I think the next 9 to 12 months uh, will probably uh, be a lot of observation on the financial sector again, what's going on in Europe. But uh, hopefully things in, in the macroeconomic picture is a little bit more stable. S certainly, I think, uh, now compared to a year ago, it is much better. What about the health of Europe's companies? Do you think that they're sort of, some of them are still being tainted by a brush of, oh, they're, not, they're no good, stay away, whereas, whereas in fact, a lot of them are actually good companies with good management doing well? The, the really big European traditionally industrial companies, a lot of them are truly global already. So it's not only a European game for them in terms of how they're performing. A lot of them took very early measures on adjusting capacity, adjusting their financials uh, when they saw the, the crisis coming. So I don't think that is the main issue. On the other hand, they are continuously, the really big companies are continuously going through restructurings to be competitive on a global basis. So you, you, for the future of Europe, at least in my view, you, you do need to focus quite a bit on the, the, the small and medium-sized uh, companies. And this is, I think, one of the key headaches, if I may put it so, in terms of the financial regulation that is now coming through. Because a lot of the liquidity in the system, in the banking system, actually is circulating between central banks and the main banks, which keeps a lot of liquidity on their, on their balance sheets. Not because they don't want to lend, but because new regulation makes it more expensive to lend to smaller companies. And if you're in Southern Europe today, you're of course funding yourself at a much higher rate. So you can ask yourself, is it really a profitable uh, outlook for a small or medium-sized company to expand right now when they have to fund themselves at quite high rates? So this is one of the key issues, I think, that politicians and central bankers and regulators are focusing on right now and will be focusing on uh, right in, in the future. Do you think in Europe regulators have gone too far as a sort of knee-jerk reaction? It's not so strange that you've had a, a very strong move into regulation. Uh, what happened in 2008 was a quite a dramatic situation where politicians and central bankers did you know, a huge amount of, of, of measures to really save the situation. They don't want to see that again. So it's not so strange that this regulation is coming through. But now, as I said earlier, we're coming into the discussion, does it really help or hurt the underlying economy? Uh, and this is, if you have some sort of a belief in the money multiplier effect of the economy, you would probably say, that the contraction of the bank's balance sheets will not help the economic multiplier to start. It will probably be more of a, of, a, of a cooling down effect on the economy. So here we are standing in a balancing uh, position between these two things. To regulate enough so that you try to reduce the risk of the financial system and on the other hand trying to get the economy going in such a way that you will not cause an, an, a bad effect because of that. So it's going to take time. I think it's going to be a, a huge effort uh, 
and a challenge for uh, the politicians is really how to create more employment, how to make companies grow, new companies being started in, in the European environment, and thereby getting more people into work. That's going to be a key. At the sa same time, we did see quite recently a little bit of the shine taken off some of the emerging economies, a little bit of enthusiasm waning for the so-called brick economies. Do you think that is just a temporary thing, that those countries will still be, are still attractive to, to foreign investors? I, I certainly believe so. I think uh, certainly Asia is very much in focus of European investors, US investors over time especially on the industrial side. I think there's a huge potential going forward. But of course, you can ask yourself the, the uh, little bit uh, question mark that has come up in the past six months, I think is also related to the worries about the tapering of uh, the QE uh, factor in the United States, which will have an impact on currencies and, and capital flows. So you, it's not so easy really to, to, have, uh, to specify exactly what this is uh, gone. You also have to remember that Europe is the largest trading bloc in the world, which means that with the current uh, slow projection of the economic uh, situation in Europe, that also has certain impact on other markets around the world because of the import-export situation. Okay, Mr. Wallenberg, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Okay.